Hi, and welcome along to the Invincible podcast with my man, Lee Judges, in the building. And we're also joined by a very special guest today, Paul Sebastiani from SEN in Melbourne, Australia. Um, Paul, welcome along to the show. Thank you very we, much. We, we met Paul the other day at the uh, the live show that we did, um, which, by the way, for everybody who came down there on the night at the Islington Assembly Hall, it was a great night, great banter. Mm. Um, this guy, actually, you impressed me, yeah? Oh, did I? You impressed very me. Much. He was quite funny. What do you mean, quite? <laughs> he was quite funny, you know what I mean? Uh, Normally on air, I'm like, shut up, man. <laughs> but actually, up on the stage, he's a pretty, hand, he? he's a pretty funny hand. guy. Yeah, he's yeah. a pretty funny guy, man. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you should do stand up or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> what, what a good night, though, wasn't it? It was, night, it was brilliant. It was brilliant. Very, very humbling to see so many people there, mm. and, yeah. you know, turn out, pay their money to, to come and see, uh, well, see see me. I, I understand it. <laughs> but, 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 I mean, like, so you and Ty si and all that. Like, but no, it was, it was absolutely the, fantastic night. The highlight it? of the night for me, right? Lee's mum was there. Yeah. Right? And people were coming up and asking Lee's mum for selfies. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, 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 she can't buy that, like, you know what I mean? Like, she's she's going to live on that for the next week. Uh, you know, she's, she hasn't stopped. So she phoned me up the next day. Oh, I had a lovely time. It was great, wasn't it? They're all asking for my photo, Lee. You know what I mean? So, uh, but yeah, she had a really good time. She enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, she, it was nice because my mum turned around and she said, oh, I'm so proud. Oh, oh, that's that's nice. Which is really that's nice, nice. You know, I mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's, she, she, she lived through my school days. She never said that. I can tell you that now, though. You know, but uh, yeah, so it was nice. But uh, it was it was great uh, doing that, and uh, I got a buzz from it. No, didn't you? Like, no, you know, it was I mean, brilliant, brilliant. Really I really enjoyed, enjoyed it. it. Really enjoyed that, that that buzz of going on the stage, and and uh, you know, like you know, little. Um, the green room and all that, like, and they mm. brought us all pizzas, didn't they, like, you know? Yeah, yeah. which tie Which tie at about six. <laughs> as, as happens, he must have had the record for 16 pizzas, like, you know what I mean? He had 15 of them. And I'll tell you what, he ain't put on no weight, does he? I'm start, I, I tell you what, I'm gonna start eating vegetable pizzas, because that's what it does to you, like, do you know what I mean? I think because he's got a tapeworm in his stomach. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> You know, I mean, he must go for a 66 mile run afterwards or something, must he? Like, you know what I mean? Unreal. He walks everywhere, no? It's unreal. I know, it's unreal. And we also, of course, we we, we met this gentleman down there on the night. Yes. Yeah. Um, Paul. Um, and Paul, tell us a bit about yourself, because you you work within um, the sports media industry yes. in yes, Australia, yes, yes. in Melbourne. That's correct, yeah. So I do, uh, my main shtick with uh, SEN uh, Australia and SEN Melbourne is, uh, I've got a show called The Overnights, uh, which is just the main general sports chit chat overnight. We take talk back from, you know, from, from callers of all walks of life. And we talk about all sports, Aussie rules, Premier League, baseball, NBL, NBA, all, all the sports you can think of in the world. Uh, and then I've also been, uh, I've been the host uh, and producer of the SEN Premier League show, which is how we, Lee and I sort of struck up a, a friendship uh, over, over the airwaves, which, is, which has been fantastic. And, uh, we basically get sort of two to three games broadcast sort of every Saturday night, Sunday morning, Monday morning uh, uh, on the SEN Airways through Talk Sport. So mm. we've got a partnership with them uh, at the moment. And uh, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been fantastic. And to, to see what Arsenal did this season, uh, you know, it's been, it's, been a, it's been a good season. It's been great. I mean, we all, when Lee and I were sort of talking at the start of the season, everyone was like, oh, could this be the year? Maybe it's third type lucky under Arteta. It's, it, it's all looking pretty, pretty good at the moment, but obviously we paid it out towards the end. But from, from a station perspective and down in Australia at SEN, it's been to cover the Premier League down under has been, it's been nothing short of phenomenal. Mm. It's been great, but best job in the world to, to, to mm. sit down in a studio and get paid to, to, to watch football and, and talk about football and talk about the Arsenal who have been one of the main stories this year has been, has been amazing. And how do, you, how do you become an Arsenal fan? It's a funny story. I, so my dad, who's he's not really, he, he never really had an allegiance to one club, but we've got all these old VHS, all these old videos that we had back at our old house. And uh, he's got one, he's got two videos of the 70, 71 uh, double winning season. Oh, yeah. And We've got one video that's got all the Premier League highlights from that year, all the, the Division One highlights. And we've got another video, which is the build up to the FA Cup and then the whole final on video. Mm. And he told me when I was, I was probably about eight or nine years old, he told me, he goes, go watch this goal. I go, who is it? Who's this guy? Who is he? This guy's celebrating with long hair. 
as is Charlie George. And ever since that day, I just I just loved Arsenal. And then Thierry Henry came along when mm. I was about 10 or 11 years old and I've just loved the club ever since. It's just been, I'm, and to think I've got such a love for the club, even though I'm based in Australia, I think just shows you not just the global reach <laughs> of Arsenal, but how attractive they are just as yeah. a club, the history, the fans, the players. I've always seen Arsenal as a classy club and a club that does it the right way. Yeah. And you couple that up with the success we've had as a club, uh, you know, maybe not in recent years, you'd say, I know we've won FA Cups, but I think just as a club that we've just been fantastic to follow even in, you know, yeah. even in even in the hard times over the last few yeah. seasons. I know, I know yeah. listen, I remember I went to Australia when Arsenal was there, probably about five, six years ago. In um, Sydney? In Sydney. Yeah. And, and I yeah. remember they played two games in the same stadium mm. and packed out both games. And yeah. The support was unbelievable, man. I mean, it was incredible out there and I really, really enjoyed it there. And funny enough, the rumours were that they were going to be going yeah, to Australia okay. this yeah. summer and it was going to be going to Melbourne. So right. it would have been your city, but now they're going back to America. I think it's... Uh, would have looked after you. Give yeah, 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 yeah. Leah would have had a look, bit of, a bit of look hospitality. After, look after us, like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, <laughs> our relationship, by the way, is a little, on a little bit rocky now because, like, he informs me he's been to talk sport this week. And <laughs> Laura Woods didn't even invite me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, I met Laura with Woods, Ali McCoy, like, well. uh, 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 and uh, yeah, uh, thanks for the invite, you know. So, uh, <laughs> we're still here for the next couple of days, so yeah. I'll try and tee it up if you yeah, want. Yeah, I'll thank you very much. <laughs> I know Laura. Yeah, uh, well, right, like, I mean, <laughs> she's a cool girl, man. Laura's a Laura, diehard gooner as yeah. well, diehard gooner, but. Yeah, no, it was nice to meet you the other day and, um, you know. Thank you. You know, I'll ask you a question, right? Yes. In Australia, mm -hmm. right, so give me the times for games because oh. this is this is something <laughs> that I always like to get across to people based there in the UK, right? Yeah. Because we've got fans right around the world and one of the things that I've learned over the years from doing AFTV and been lucky enough to go right around the world with it and you meet fans and the different, the, the you know, I think there's a lot of fans sometimes locally who feel that, you know, we're the proper fans. Of, <laughs> but at the end of the day, the only difference between us and any other fan around the world is that we've got the ground near to us, it's accessible, mm. we can get there. But the commitment of fans around the world mm. is unbelievable. Now, I wanna give, I'm gonna throw some times at you and you tell me <laughs> the times that you have to watch these games. So if there's a, Let's start off with 12.30. So 12.30 yes. kickoff. Yeah. On a Saturday, that's 12.30 kickoff. What time would that's you It's probably, what time's that? It's about a one, what, what is it? A 1 a.m., 10 p.m. job, I think. What's the time difference between London and Melbourne? 10. 10? 10. Yeah. So 1 a.m. in the morning, that game would start. Yeah. A.m. Correct. No, oh, is it, sorry, 10, 10, 10 p.m. 10 p.m. 10 p.m. For, for a midday game. All right, yeah. so, so that's not bad. Yeah. That's not All right. bad. It's okay. 5.30. 30. Sorry, 10 30. Yeah. All right, let's go to 5, let's go to 4.30. 4.30 kickoff, that Sunday one. Couple of 4 hours. 30. What's that? Two, yeah, two thirty a.m. Oh, I'm good at this match. Two thirty. So, well. so, so that four thirty game. So like yeah. last, it's crazy. Uh, two eight, two thirty a.m. in the morning. Wow. And then a Champions League game, Forget eight o'clock kickoff. Forget about it. What time's that? It's probably like sometimes it's it's five a.m. or seven a.m. Yeah, in the six, morning. Yeah, six in between five to seven a.m. Is the time so, in the morning we're waking so up. So on a... So that's a weekday, isn't it? Yeah, so it's, it's either a Wednesday yeah. morning or a Thursday morning for us in Australia. Yeah. That's kickoff time. I think I think this season there were like 4.45 a.m. kickoffs for Champions League. And I don't know with the new... I don't know if there's yeah. this new format so and new time. So, so, so by time you, by time you've watched... If the Champions League game started at 8 and you're watching it, by the time that game finishes... 10 o'clock. It's then. about like 9.30. Off to work. <laughs> So you got to be or at work, or it's you're watching crazy. it at work, or you're watching <laughs> it at work. Yeah, so, what, so is that what yeah. happens with people in like they, they, they watch it at work? Then what they move in the morning, morning. watch it on their way to the commute. You know, if they're commuting into into the city by by public transport or whatever it might be, they've got to watch it on their phones or listen listen to it on SEN. Uh, and wow. yeah, just, or, yeah, it's or crazy. be like Robbie Lay. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you talk about Lay. Talk or, about late. or watch you, it in your office at work. You'd be fast asleep, man. Yeah. Oh, that's that. nice. But that's so, some commitment, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, like, like the, yeah, the time frames are from 10:30 p.m. to 5 a.m. with kickoffs yeah. for, for us in Australia. So wow. it's yeah, it's it's wow, it's crazy. You have got to be pretty committed. Yeah, but people are because yeah. it's huge, isn't it? The Absolutely. Premier League. It's huge in Australia. Huge. So you, massive, so you watch massive. those games like, you know, do you get the three o'clock games out there all the time as yeah, well? Like, like pretty much. Doing yeah. Other place, so yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah we're, we're broadcasting, like from a station's perspective, we broadcast two to three games per night, per weekend. 
but from a tally perspective, we we've got. All the oh, games, no. yeah, I think it's it's up to sport who who has the so, broadcasting so if you've rights got for like us. A, yeah, a five a.m. kickoff, for instance. Do you go to bed and wake up, or do you just go through? I'm I go through because of overnight radio and and the way yeah, like no, my yeah, clock is set up. What about normal people? What normal, they oh, they'd go to bed and wake up surely. No, or if you're or if you're psychopathic Jeez. like my cousin on the left hand side, you <laughs> just stay up all night and do all night. It's forty eight hours. Go to work, have six short blacks, have six coffees, and you're fine. You're all good. Uh, yeah, that's commitment, commitment though. That's commitment. You've got to be though. You, know, you have and, uh, to be. And, and I love getting that across to to everybody because you know, and and you know, there'd be people down your end of the world yeah. and Singapore's and people like that waking up crazy hours. 100%. Then there's people you know, like in America, they got crazy hours. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot of commitment. It's a lot mm. of commitment. So big respect going out to all those Australian um, Arsenal fans out there because, and Definitely. I meet so many every game. I've been to this season. Yes. There's been fans from Australia. Australia right? Yeah, yeah. Every single one. And, and the other thing that is... I've like, travelled from Australia for the game. Yeah, come over for, for one or two games. And when you think about it, they're leaving, you know, like their summer for our winter. First yeah. of all, that's crazy. You know what I mean? Like, you know, to come out, you know, in mm. the freezing cold when they've got like nice sun and all that. And, that's, <laughs> and the other thing is, and like with Paul and the guys in, they all know their stuff. They yeah, yeah, yeah. They know it inside all, out. All about the game inside out and all yeah. that, like, you know. Uh, and and the passion for it is, yeah. and I'll tell you what you don't realise, do you? When you, I, I never realised how how big it was abroad until mm. you actually come into it. We sort of like cocooned into yeah, the game, yeah, like yeah. just games and all that. Yeah, no, well, and I, it branches out. Yeah, it's I went incredible. to Australia as I said, and I, I, I saw it first, and it was absolutely incredible. Yeah. Um, and incredible support over there. And uh, what what have the uh, the Aussies made of the season for Arsenal this year? Because um, yeah, like you it's said. An interesting one. It was looking beautiful. <laughs> it was looking great. Uh, I, I don't know about you guys, right? I'll tell you, the last... They were over here for the, uh, for the parade. <laughs> we, were, we were. Is that what you're coming yeah. for? That, well, that was it. But re regardless, we were going to come anyway, win, lose or draw. You're either all in or all out. Regardless of if they'd had a one or not, we were going to come anyway. Yeah, it's been so depressing. So depressing, um, you know, the fact that we didn't actually do it in the end. We didn't actually yeah. lift, the, lift that trophy. Watching City lift it last week was really hard for me. Hurt. It hurt. Yeah, I think like the feeling down in Australia, because it, there are a lot of fans of different clubs. I had some Spurs supporters on my Twitter giving it the bigger, like, really? Well, we, we, uh, we've had it here. I mean, Aussie, Aussie Spurs shameless supporters. Aussie Spurs supporters. supporters. Shameless. Uh, like, shameless of them. Absolutely I shameless. I get stuffed in pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I think the feeling around our office at work and I think just on the socials down in Oz has been, I think Arsenal have just fallen short purely because of the squad. Really, it's not for lack of a desire yeah. or lack of want or or lack of tactical nous from our, from our managers and, and coaches or anything like that. It's just to try and and I think everybody real, realizes this around the world is that to try to match it with a team like Manchester City up to a certain point and then to get there and then fall short fall short at the final hurdle is I think there's a difference between disappointment and failure if that makes sense. You yeah. Know? But we did kind of throw it away, didn't we? We did, uh, and, and that's, you, you, the hard, that's, that's the worst I mean, thing. That's the worst there's thing. reasons why we, yeah. I guess what we're, you know, when you look on it now, um, I've been sort of thinking about it a lot recently. I'm like, there are some reasons, yeah. but still we threw it away. We still we threw it away. I mean, like somebody was saying to me the other day, well, what, why didn't Arteta go and get a, another defender in, in January? And so, so I was saying, but if you actually look at it, at that time we had Saliba, yeah. right? You know you've got your backup of holding and that, but you also at that time, Mikel Arteta would have been saying, right, if Sal anything happens to Saliba, I can move Ben White back into that position yeah. and yeah. I can play Tommy Asu. But then what happens? Tommy Asu gets injured out for the season. Then Saliba gets injured out yeah. for the season, and then there's just no cover there. So there's no cover for Ben White a right back, and then you know Rob Holding came in, but he's a different type of defender. Yeah. So the levels dropped a bit on because of the way we're trying to play, and and that kind of costs us. I and mean, you said the other night that you felt it was a Liverpool game. Yeah, I, I do where, feel it was a Liverpool we, game. Where we, where, and Be I, I, I kind of agree with that. Because if you look back at the Liverpool game, if if we if we won that game, it was still very much in our hands. As soon as we we didn't win that game, and then like the Man City game, it be, what happened was that that day become it, it went into Liber uh, Man City's hands as well. And if we'd, have, I think if we'd have won that game against Liverpool, I think the momentum and would have took us through. I don't mm. think we'd have lost points against uh, West Ham and, and, and Southampton. And I honestly think, looking back at it, 
that that game dented us a little bit of confidence. We was cruising it and in the end we was hanging on and I think it put a few doubts in the minds of the players yeah. as well. Yeah, It's one of them games that um, I think if we'd have beaten Liverpool yeah, I it would have been such a yeah. tough place to go to. If we'd have beaten them we would have given us so much belief Yeah, that those following games now like you said I just don't think we would have missed that penalty that Saka missed. I just don't think he would have missed that because the belief See the thing is I look at that game and, if you, and, and, and realistic the way it's gone at the moment it, Forget about what happened with Man City against Brighton because I think it's a completely different thing. But if we'd have drawn against Liverpool and then lost to Man City, Man City still would have won the league if we'd have won every single game. If we'd have won those games, they'd have still had the points. Now, people say, oh, well, they dropped points against Brighton. But, you know, it's a different mentality now. Like, I couldn't actually watch that game. Brighton. Right. No, I couldn't I watch it because, highlights, yeah. because it's, 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 done, it's, it's it? done. You know, so... And then the other thing is, I think that... By winning that game, I think we would have gone eight points clear of them, and the pressure would have been on them a little bit more. I don't. I, I think that there were a couple of occasions when we could have really put the pressure on them uh, with, with the points tally. You know, I think Brentford was another one where we could have put, put uh, pressure on. We actually drew the game, but there was a couple of occasions. But I look back at that Liverpool game, and I think if we'd have won that game, you're giving us belief. Well, I, I think Absolutely. we'd have won the league. It would have given us belief, and um, you know, but. Unfortunately, we didn't, and it went a bit flat in the end. And even last week, I feel very flat now, though, don't you? Yeah. I feel very flat. I feel, I feel very, very flat. flat. I th- I, you know, we made a good point. You know, like it's the last game of the season coming up now, and do you, do you clap them off and, and cheer them off? And part of me wants to, but another part of me feels no. It's, I, I, no. I need, yeah. Well, no. I, I, I'll tell you where I feel. I'm, I, yeah, I, I don't want to be going around like they're all around. Yeah, yeah. Like it's. it's yeah, we've done fantastically well. That's it. The part of me wants to say no. This is this is what I expect Arsenal to be yeah. like now. I, I want us to be winning it. Not, yeah, but they not have done celebrate. fantastically well. Yeah, they have done. But I don't want them players thinking, "Oh, look, look at all they're all happy and all that." Like, so what do you want to do then? I, I, I want us to go again and make sure that. Yeah, we no, go but what again. do you want to do when you see them on Sunday? I don't know. I feel very mixed about that. I feel like if I if I go if I go cheering them cheering them too much, they think it's a success what we've done, and it's not. So you're going to do that? I don't know. It's 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 like it is. It's been a very very. It's been a good season, but it's not been a successful season. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And I don't mean that very very horribly. Like you know. It's no shame to come second to Man City in any time. But, but they deserve, I they, think. They I think, do, they do, but I they think did the team, fail at the end of the day. They did fail at the end of the day, right? But I think they deserve. Yes, I do. A, a, a massive salute, right? Not not a winning salute, obviously. Well, we have won Trump in, and I'll like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I think they deserve, listen, at the start of the season, right? You would have been more than happy to have got top four, wouldn't you? Yeah, like, listen, yeah. yes, more would than you, that. Would you, would you have said at the start of the season that you probably take a top four finish over maybe winning the FA Cup and... No. The League Cup? No. Look, listen... Top, I would. Top, what, you prefer we've to the, we've, top four than... This season, this season... I'll always have this, trophy before This that. season, yeah. I would have taken a top four finish over winning the FA Cup or winning the League Cup. The reason being is that we've not been in the Champions League for yeah. so long. Yeah, but it's no We've good got, doing what Spurs lo, lo, are and getting knocked out. No, no, but hold on, hold on. Last season we got close to it. And for, I look on it and I say, for the progression of this side, to enable us to get better players. That's why I wanted it so badly last year as well. I'm like, mm. it's a game changer for Arsenal, right? Well, as when you're talking about building is a Is it a game changer? You don't know, do you? I feel it is, yeah. But you, I you just, think that Arsenal are going to make massive signings in, are you? Well, I, you think for starters, we're being linked with, say, for instance, Declan Rice, right? If we ain't got a Champions League, no way Declan Rice better. is coming to Arsenal. Right. No way. Yeah, but you ain't a guy, more, a, a guy more than Declan Rice. No, no, but what I'm saying is, there's a bit more to... I, I get it. The trophies is always the most important thing, and it's, it would have been nice to have a day at Wembley and stuff like that. But for the progression of this team, I look on it and I say, for the type of players I want to start seeing Arsenal signing and stuff like that, we need Champions League football. We need to be back at that top table. I've been getting really pissed off, right? Watching Champions League nights, hearing that music and seeing bloody Tottenham out there or teams (laughs) like that. And I'm like, 
Uh, there was games this season I watched in the Champions League. You ain't going to hear them this year. Right? Yeah. Definitely ain't going to hear them this year. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't going to hear no music. But I was, there was games I was watching this year, right? Because I remember like on DR Sports, um, I was hosting a, some of the Champions League games. And I, and I actually, I'm sitting there and I'm watching it and I feel jealous. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah, man, yeah, I get this, that. This is where we need to be at. We're in mm. Arsenal, man. We should be, we should be playing Barcelona's and we should be, we should be, we should be on this stage. And that's why I felt that this year was important to get that. But the great thing about this season, although we didn't, obviously, we didn't win it, right? But the great thing about this season is that not one Arsenal fan, and I, I said it the other night when we was doing the live show, was talking about the champ, you know, Champions yeah, League no, qualification. Yeah, I know, I didn't Even right when yet. we got that, we nobody was like, like, we weren't having a party, yeah, Champions yeah. League. Yeah. Nobody said anything about it. Nobody said nothing about St. Tottenham's Day or nothing like that, because everybody was just like, we're challenging right. for the league. Yes. We can win the league with focus. Now, and that's the other thing. I want to see Arsenal, year in, year out, challenging for the league. And this is the first mm. time in over 10 years that I've seen a proper challenge by yeah. this team and that's, to that's win the league. Be... So for me, the t playing those players come out on that pitch on Sunday after, before and after the game when, you know, they walk round yep. and, right? They deserve, from all of the fans, a rapturous round of applause or you know appreciation from the fans I mean you might be miserable and they're <laughs> drinking your bloody pint in your you know I, club I, or hospitality or whatever I, I, listen, but I'll be out there and I'll be I'll be giving them a do, massive do you know round what? of applause I, I'll be really honest with you about that I, I'm proud of the way the team's gone and all that like, but and if Arsenal went won the league they had that little blip what we did and then they put in performances like against Brighton um, um, last week at Forest and against Wolves and I, I would be, but it's, it's, what's what's happened in the last couple of games has been very, very disappointing, man. I, I tell get you that. Disappointing. But you got to remove that, Lee. I know. Well, I, I, hopefully, I will. Like you know what I mean. But what what's disappointing me is that, from from my point of view, is that every fan base has been having a go at us, taking the Mickey and whatever, like you know. And we've got to accept that. That's the way part and parcel of football. And the players have allowed, you know, like have, have not reacted to that. And I feel a little bit disappointed by that. You know, like show 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 us a little bit, a bit but more pride, a little bit yeah. more pride in those those games. You know what I mean? Like last week was a tough watch again, very very very, very tough watch. Now, I I go back to the, the Man City game after the Man, we was all built up for that. After one minute, we weren't going to win that game. You knew that it was it was a horrible watch for 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 ninety minutes. Uh, and I, but I can accept that against Manchester City. It was exactly the same as like that on on, on last Saturday at Nottingham Forest. So I was just standing there, look, three sides of the ground taking the mickey ever. You know, Manchester City are laughing at you. You know what I mean? Like, you know, um, and you know, you you messed it up and all that, like, you know. And there was no response from the players whatsoever. Bit of personal pride. Look, listen, they've done fantastically yeah. well, but there is that little thing, like, you know, oh, would you have took this at the beginning of the season? Of course you would. You know what I mean? But Last season, we needed uh, four points from our last three games, and we didn't do it. You know what I mean? And uh, well, we and then there was that talk of, oh well, you would have took that at the beginning of the season, like you know, and and it's the same thing now. Would you took that at the beginning of the season? Yes, I would have, but we got ourselves into a position where we could have really gone for it. And I, I'm disappointed that we're not going to the last. Even if we needed to win on su Sunday and they needed to drop points and it weren't going to happen. We, I, I'm disappointed it didn't go to the, yeah. the last couple of yeah, games no, last yeah. season. Should have it should have took it to the last couple of seasons. For me, I don't think that 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 should be celebrated. That bit, you know <laughs> what I mean. But you know, like, listen, they have done fantastically well, and, and they're a young side. And this thing, I'm going to say this about the Champions League. Yeah, it's great being in the Champions League. You know what I mean? Um, at this moment, the only thing that is great great about the Champions League. Is that it's costing me, you, and everybody else for season tickets a lot more money this season already. That's the first thing. As soon as that, as yeah, as that's it, as that email come in, the day we was confirmed, <laughs> right? That's how I knew we got Champions League football. Ah, Mr. Judges, we want more money off you because it's Champions League, right? So that's fair enough. So I've now got to pay that for for another same group stages as what I've had before. You know what I mean? But maybe a little bit better of football, you know. So, are they going to go and spend the money or are we going to get another? Because my last Champions League experience, Robbie, was 
Five one. Oh Jesus. And, and five, five one. one. Yeah. Against yeah. Bayern Munich, not great. Not the not the thing that I really want to celebrate, like you know what I mean. So <laughs> they've got to do some real proper work in the yeah. summer before I turn around and go, oh yeah, it was great to get a top four instead of the FA Cup and all that, like you know. So I'm I'm this season now coming into the summer is the massive season mm. for Mr. Edu and Mr. Arteta and all that, like you know. Yeah, and definitely. if I do bump into it, Mr. Edu, <laughs> and I've not got what I've wanted. I'm coming for him. <laughs> he will be buying lunch, not me. <laughs> well, right, Paul, what's your thoughts? <sighs> last will day. you be last day? Did that did that team deserve? I think you have to. I think as a supporter base and fan base, you need to strike the balance between the two because it's a dangerous. I think it's a dangerous exercise. Not actually patting them on the back for what they've done this season, but also. There's a part of me that says, "Well, we haven't we haven't won anything, mm. if that makes sense." And Arsenal's so always made big been progress. A club. They have made big progress, and I think it's it's a stepping stone to where we want to be. Clearly, there's absolutely no doubt about that. I'll I'll be applauding them when they when they when they come out onto the field on uh, on this weekend against Wolves. I think they've had they've had a great season, and I do think though it's not. It's, it's a dangerous spot to continually pat them on the back for what they've done this season because it's still not what we want. Yeah. It's not what we want, if that makes sense. And I think, as I said, I think we need to strike the balance between giving them a kick up the backside to say this last month. If these, if these set of results happened during the season before this run-in, we would have been up in arms. Everyone would have been up in arms. The draw against Southampton, the draw against West Ham, losses to Nottingham, terrible. They were shocking, but I think they've been let off a little bit because of the the entirety of the season, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, that, and I think what I'm liking about Mikel Arteta is that he knows that okay, it might be a pat on the back for now, but this off season you're all getting a kick kick up the backside, not just for the last month, but the standards did drop off a little bit. Yeah. And I think as a supporter base, when, when were we playing our best, and when was the club playing its best when everyone was on board? Yeah, when we were flying, and I, I think they do deserve that this weekend. I think that's what we need. Well, we to were give playing them. our best at the, you know, literally all season until yeah. right at the end. Correct. You know, what I mean, we were playing our best, and you know, well, it's no, notable that the he, Saliba one. Well, I'm, I'm looking at it. I'm like the Saliba coming out of the team sort of coincided with the, the starting to see a little dip now. All of a sudden, mm. you know, what I mean, conceding more goals at home and. Yeah, just like you know, what I mean, we started to see a dip after he sort of he sort of came out. But I think, um, what, I've got to say, most of the season we played good. Okay. Yeah, the one, the right one, the, end. the yeah. one thing that you 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 take, I, I take from and I look back at the old season. I, I we lost to Manchester United, but I didn't have the ump for that because I felt we we, we put well. in a performance we and played well. We did. Even the, the the Liverpool game, you know what I mean? Like we dropped points that day, mm. but you looked at it and thought, wow, there's some some Great fantastic game. football. Yeah. The West Ham game for that first twenty minutes. You know, blew away. my West Ham mate turned around and said, I've never seen a team destroy us like that in mm. the first 20 minutes. You know what I mean? They were thinking it was going to be five or six. You know, the great comeback against Southampton, you can take it from there. The two games that have really hurt me and I was annoyed at was the Everton game, yep. you know, away from home, and, and the Nottingham Forest game, and, and probably the Brighton game, but, I, you know, the Brighton game, they're a mm. decent side. But those two games, I we, we, what I, what I, you can take from everything you want, but when I, I look at a team wanting it more than us, that, that that's not acceptable. Mm. Basically, we've left left the worst to a loss when it comes to performances. Yeah. Mm. And that's the problem, I guess, when we're talking about saluting them and stuff like that, is that what lingers in our mind is those last few games. So yeah. you're looking at it, you're thinking, well, you know, Brighton, where were you? Like? Where were you like Forest, man? You know, I mean, fans turned up, beautiful day. Where were you? Where was the, where was the you know? So we've left the worst or last, but I think in the Premier League, all you've got to do is have a drop of a few percent. Thank you. Yeah. And then, you know, like last week, you're coming up against a team desperate, hungry, celebrating every tackle and things like that. And then us just couldn't break them down. You know mm. what I mean? So, uh, um, and, and it shows that come this, you know, come this uh, summer, this squad needs to be improved. But um, on the, uh, when we did the live show the other night, by the way, um, we announced... Uh, who everybody uh, had voted for. So we, we did a vote on our app um, for everybody to vote for their um, yep. player of the season, Arsenal player of the season. 
And uh, the results were in on that, which I announced on the night. And in third place was Saka, Bukaya Saka came third. In second place was uh, Martinelli. He, he um, came runners up, but the Arsenal player of the year as voted by AFTV followers was uh, Martin Odegaard. Um, you guys all agree with that one? I mean, oh, I went with, he had a I fantastic went with season, 15 yeah. goals. Yeah, he, he was brilliant, the captain. I, I completely agree. I, I think that the one thing I looked at with Odegaard this season was not, and, and we all applauded his on-field success this season. His, his numbers were, you know, career mm. best, granted. I think the one thing that, that I really looked at from from a fan's point of view and, and the way I look at the game and, and the way I love my players to operate is not not necessarily the development of him on field, but as a leader, mm. I think that's where he's taken the mm. next step. And I don't think, I don't, we haven't really had that as a club, someone that we can really put up as a linchpin of our team. And he plays in the right role as well, in the heart of, the, in the heart of midfield, in the heart of the team. I think his development as a as a leader and as 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 a captain, I think for me is why I had him as my mm. number one because he's he's led the ship, he's led this crusade to a Premier League title race and hopefully beyond as well. And I don't think people people keep forgetting about his age. Yeah, he's still got he could have a decade of football left. I mean, you don't know. I mean, people develop at different rates and people can you know they they can dip they can dip mm. off a cliff and things like that can happen. But I think he's got the right frame of mind which we haven't really had we haven't really had anyone settled into that captain's role for for a mm. long long time i remember i was watching a video from back ages ago i mean we had kieran gibbs with the captain's armband a few years a few seasons mm. ago in the champions league granite jacker i know what happened with him he threw the captain's armband and took his top off and and that happened and obviously his 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 development since then's been great obviously he's, he's probably going to go off but martin odegaard's just been I think he's going to be our captain for the next five, six, seven seasons, and yeah. we haven't we haven't had that stability on field for, for for ages, and that that's that's why that's why you've seen results waver. I think in the last sort of five to eight seasons, and, and his stability and growth as a captain, it comes as no shock that our on field performances have spiked. He's he's the leader of it all, and he's the man that I think is going to take us all the way to to the Premier League promised land. I yeah. hope anyway. Let's, let's open uh, another player. Player mentioned who came third um, in those rankings, but. Been a, uh, he's been so consistent this season and last season and has been a, such a brilliant player for club and country is uh, Bukaya Saka mm. who was given a new contract this week um, I've seen a lot of uh, mixed reactions uh, on the on, on the, really? on the contract where yeah. people are just you know questioning the amount of money he's getting a, a reported £300,000 a week um, is, is what's been said or it could be 250 plus right um where do you guys stand on it? Of course, for me, I'm more than happy that he signed a brand new deal. I think this is great for the club. I think, you know, if you look at Saka, for me, he's one of the best young players in European football, Completely in world agree. football. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's shone at the World Cup, he's shone at the Euros, and he shines in the Premier League, right? And I'm hoping that, you know, he's going to replicate that in the Champions League yeah. as well. And. Also, I just look at it and say, you don't pay the going rate for these type of players. Well, exactly. Even though he's come up hail end, come up through the ranks and bye bye. It's bye bye. You know yeah. what I mean? Because you know any other team would have him. I mean, what's your thoughts on it? I, I, I can't believe it. Like, you know, first and foremost, if if uh, you know we haven't paid a fee for him, mm. you know what I mean. So if he was to say like let him go, you have to go and spend about how much was it? Was Saka cost a hundred million? Easy. You know what I mean? Easy, like, easy. easy. Or more, like. I think more than so, that. Yeah. So, like, you know... So remember the age, he's 21. Yeah. Not even an argument. So, you're paying on, on, on wages. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, just, I don't get it. Like, you know, he's probably been on very, very low wages through his first year or two at, at the club. He might have yep. got a little boost a, a couple of years ago. But, like, well, I bet when he first came into the side, you know what I mean? He was on uh, very, very small wages compared yeah. to some of the players and all that. Like, he deserves it. He's, he's, he's actually carried this club for the last couple of years. And I, mm. I actually really annoys me that there's, there's Arsenal fans that have been slagging him off because he's had a little dip in form. You know what I mean? Like over the last s few games. And, maybe and that's only because he's played every single game. He's 21 years, exactly. of, age. He's 21 exactly. years yeah. of age. He's played every game. I mean, you know, in an ideal world, and again, when we're talking about squad depth, in an ideal world, right, he would have been taken out for some games and, and, and rested, you know do what I mean? Know, but they just you know can't what? rest him because he's so important. And, um, Spot on. 
he, he's 21 years of age, right? And um, he has two players marking him all the time, right? You know, <laughs> which is true, right? And I, I done a thing yesterday. I went on to this little, little course thing for a coaching thing. It was like coaching fullbacks and how they, how they cut the space down and all that, like, you know. And so you've got like the best fullbacks in this country being coached how to stop all these sort of things. It's not, it's, it's all mm. done properly. And he still, he still goes past them like they're not there. You know, I mean, I think he's a wonderful, wonderful player. I don't think he gets the, you know, the praise for doing that. Like, you know, what I mean, taking on players, beating them in those situations, and 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 he's always. They actually teams now put two players on him because mm. the fullback cannot cope with him. And How good end, is that? You know, his end product it's, like it's, goals it's unbelievable. and assists. You know, double he's a top top thing. player. And I'll tell you what, if we don't have him, Manchester City would have took him and probably got, p- paid more money. Real Madrid as well. So, yeah, and, and, and got more money than what he's getting at Arsenal. Don't, don't, don't ever think that these, these players are signing these contracts and I'll go to Martinelli, Gabriel, hopefully Saliba and all that. They will be in getting offered more money at other clubs, but it's not just about the money. Yeah. It's mm. about the, where they are and everything like that. And, you know... I'm a massive, massive fan of him. Like yeah. you know, what I mean, I know he hasn't been great towards the end of the season, but he gets my he he'll, he gets a f- forgiveness from me every single time. He's yeah. been fantastic for mm, Arsenal. Agreed. Anybody that's criticising that, and I'll tell you what, the other thing is, uh, uh, no one's criticised um, how much De Bruyne is on. No one criticises how much Grealish is on and all that. Why are they criticising what he's on? Why? He's he's the best young English player coming through at the minute. I, I don't know f- when Foden got his contract. It, was anybody questioning what, yeah, what he's he was on getting? about 250 yeah, as well. Why, but, but why Saka? And Saka yeah. plays every week, so yeah, Foden exactly. doesn't. Yeah, and, 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 and ca- has carried Arsenal for the last couple of years. Yeah. And I mean has that, he he sincerely he has carried this yeah. club. Yeah. He deserves to be rewarded, doesn't he? I, he took, took the words right out of my mouth. I think as, as a club, and just as any, as any organisation, you've got to reward the right things. And, and that's... That's what sets your culture up as as a club and as a sporting organisation. Rewar- rewarding him with such a big contract is the right thing to do. There's no like there's no questions about it. He's come through Hale End. He's developed under our you know under the Arsenal under the Arsenal umbrella. He's coming to the first team. He's done the right thing, and he's performed at a high level for pretty much the entirety of the season. And I think I think his form dip has coincided with Saliba coming out. Because it's meant that White can't push forward and overlap and help him out. I think the one thing I recognised too with a bit of his form, Dip Saka, was he was tracking back more than I've seen him because mm-hmm. Saliba was out. So I, I, f- forget about the form, Dip. I'm, I'm not worried about that at all. From a contractual perspective, I don't think there's... For, for me, it's simple. He deserves it. It's, it's, there's, yeah. no, there's no arguments to it. And, and yeah. I think our problem in the last however many years has been the wage bill has been shocking. We haven't re- rewarded, rewarded the right players. Rewarded the wrong people. You've yeah. got to reward the right people, and if you do, it sets a standard for the whole squad because they're like, okay, well, he's come through Hale End, he's done it the right way. He's listened mm. to the manager, he's played well, and he gets a. It's no shock that he's getting whatever yeah. it is, three hundred thousand like pounds you said, a week. You've got to pay the rate. If you turn of around course. to, if you turn around to Saka and say, yeah, you're only twenty one, mate, so we'll give you hundred and fifty. <laughs> Right, his agent will just say, "Yeah, well, I've got offers from Real Madrid, yeah. I've got offers from PSG, yeah, I've got offers from City. You know, what I mean, uh, Liverpool. They'll all take him, man. And they'll. This one's got two fifty on the table. He's got three hundred, exactly. three fifty. He'd be gone. Well, put it this way: if He'd be if, gone. if we didn't offer what he wanted, or or this three hundred thousand pounds a week, and he left to go to another club to get more. Could you imagine the outrage then? <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? right. Well, it's a great, exactly, it's exactly. A great, a great thing he said in his interview was he turned around and said like, um, I've always wanted to stay, I wanted to stay, I wanted to stay, but it took a long while. Like, you know what I mean, to sort out. So, you know, and probably the same with Saliba, he's probably indicating no, you've got agency. Yeah, you've got your agents yeah. in there and they're, but, but the they're, agent, they're going to yeah. get the best. They're getting the best for, for what they can. And, and, and they want the going rate. And Everyone want to, wants a clip of the ticket yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so for <laughs> me, that as well. Saliba now is a massive one. Huge. That, that's, that, yeah. that's, well, that's, that's the next one now. And, I, you Oof. know, I mean, I, I want to see that get tied down as soon yes. as possible. Yeah. I mean, you know, maybe, but, the, maybe the fact that he's been out injured for so long might have helped Arsenal a bit in that maybe there's not so many clubs immediately knocking on the door to try and get his signature but we've yeah. got to get him tied down haven't we yeah, 100% I, I, I think as much as I love Saka and I said this on the show didn't I, like a live show that we've done as 
much as I, the, the, the one player I think is guaranteed to become world class out of all of our young players. And I think Martinelli and Saka have all got great chances at Udegaard, all great chances at his Saliba. I think he's got everything. I, I, I mm. actually say, like, for the first time in a long life, blown away by him when he when he first, mm. when I first see him in America and, and, mm. and, and that, I went, oh my God. I haven't done that for a player for a very, very long while. And it is paramount we get him signed on. Mm. I think, he's, you know, there ain't a better deal. You know when you say like Saki, you can turn around and say there's players as good as him or whatever like, you know, they name me a 21 year old central defender as good or better than Saliba. Yeah, I, no, I think no, he's, he's quality. The only, the only one I've looked at him recently and said that, is that, is that Garvidal? Is the one who's oh, that, yeah, from Croatia. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Croatian yeah, centre back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the yeah. Leipzig plays. Yeah, yeah, he's, Mariol. he's good as well. Yeah. And look at how much money they want for him. Yeah, they're mm. talking about like ninety million and plus. That's the market. That's yeah, just so, how it is. It's you know, inflated. So it's inflated. You can't turn around to these players and <laughs> offer them peanuts, mate. They'll just no, say, no. Oh, "Forget <laughs> it. I'm gone." And now we've got Champions League football, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, but having Champions League football encourages players like Saliba to stay. Correct. Because he hasn't, he doesn't have to. He's not going to say, "All right, I'm getting a load of money, but I'm not playing at the highest level. I'm not. I want to be playing, you know." Because those players are just like how I said, right? Where I was doing those watch-alongs, and I'm jealous. You imagine the players? Yeah, they got rid of same. When they're sitting there and they're saying some of those big games like that City versus um, Real yeah, Madrid game the other day, and you're a big player, uh, like Harry Kane next season, and he's just going to sit down yeah. and he's. Uh, He'd watch be Coronation watching them, Street. Yeah, <laughs> and he'd be watching them big games, right? And he'd be like... Who's that? <laughs> you know, a, a geezer up the road. And he'd, be, and he'd be thinking, I should, I'm good enough to play on that stage. And I should be on that stage. What am I doing here? What am I doing at Tottenham? So this is yeah. why Champions League is important. 100%. Like, to then enable you to go to that next step now to buy certain players. You know what I mean? And actually, I want to ask you guys that. Um, how many signings do you reckon we need? For me, it's minimum four. I think minimum four. Yeah. I, I think we need to strengthen in every position on the park. Not, I think the goalkeeper. For what positions? For, I'd, I, I think a centre back. Another centre back is needed. Yeah. I think a right back is needed. Yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, probably a, a defensive midfielder. I think in the ilk of Declan Rice is 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 I think needed as well. And I think a right winger, too. I I, I was looking at the way we operate and, and I think that there are there were news articles coming yeah. out saying that they, they're not too worried about getting a main striker if that makes sense so, and I think we've we've done that quite well we've got an even spread I think with our goal scorers too but, but for me it's right wing I think that defensive solid rock midfield role that Declan Rice will play and then for me it's a centre back and a right back I think yeah. you? I, I think five I think five because if and positions uh, two midfield players, two central midfield players, because mm -hmm. obviously, like Shaka looks like he's going to be mm -hmm. gained, so you've got to replace him. And plus, we need an, a one anyway, so that's going to cost yep. a lot of money. Two of them, like, and, and you know, the two that I want, that's going to cost a lot right, of money. I see that you want it. Uh, yeah, I do. I do. I think that uh, a centre back or a right back, because I think if we've got a right back, Ben White could cover the central defence. Correct. Defense. Yep. Uh, and if we've got a centre back, you know, you've still got enough cover in the right right back area. So, like. That's what I would do there. I I try and get Nel Reece Nelson to sign, mm -hmm. mm. so that keeps that wide area, and I'll go for a target centre forward, just to give us something Who? different. Yeah, who's your target uh, centre forward? Osherman. Uh, 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 <laughs> I think that you know that would be nice, but I think it's probably if you're going to go and buy a Casido and you're going to go and buy Rice, I think that's going to be a little bit out of yeah. order. I, I would the, the f there's three players that I would. I would look at um, Vlavic at Juventus, okay. Mitrovic at Fulham, and, and maybe say, 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 uh, Abraham's, Tammy, Tammy Abraham's, Abraham yeah. at, um, at Roma. People go, oh, he ain't that great and all that, but if, if I look at that and I go, well, he ain't going to play week in, week out. You know what I mean? I still like Ev Jesus as my main man, but there are times in games. Tammy Abraham is prolific, isn't it? Well, I, I don't know if you have to be prolific. I think it's just something yeah. to give us that option that that you know. I would like to see a. And... I would like to see a prolific striker come in. And, yeah. well, we've got um, one. 
We've got Balogun. Prolific in the French. Just going to ask about him, actually. So yeah. Yeah. I, I will give Lack him. Lacazette's the, the top goal scorer in the French league. <laughs> yeah. But and he yeah. scored four for us last season. Was it three? Yeah, but you know, he's the top goal scorer in the French league right now. But he now. was playing right back for us. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 listen, uh, um, Balogun. I think he's got to have a chance. Yeah, he scored like you say, he's got twenty okay. goals, and, and and playing in a very average team, and he's Correct. been absolutely outstanding. So. You know, I'd I would like to see him given a chance. I don't know if Arsenal are going to cash in on him, mm. but I would like to see him given a chance. I'd say what you know when they say about the French league. I, I'm going to name a couple of players that have come from the French league and, and been a real success. Hazard. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you know, no one turned around and said, "Well, he's come out of the French league." You know what I mean? And done like you know. Pepe. That's one that's come out of the French league. <laughs> <laughs> you, as you give the mark, oh, I, I can okay, hear the groans in the right, audience right. now. S Saliba. <laughs> Yeah. That end in Bele who plays for uh, Spurs. And, uh, you know what I mean? So. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Patrick Vieira. <laughs> Are you guys going yeah. right back now? No, no, I mean, actually, yeah. he actually come from Italy. But, uh, you know, I, I know what you're saying. I, I think that uh, he does deserve a chance, though. Like, yeah, I, no, I, no, I listen, we, the thing is, I, I say that, I don't want to belittle what yeah. he's done. I mean, to go as a young player. Hmm go to France to uh, not a team that's like not even an established team that normally but yeah. you wouldn't even be in that it's a foreign place for him too yeah, as a young yeah. man and to score 20 not goals easy. lead the yeah. line and score 20 goals uh, that's been outstanding yeah. I mean you know he's, and he's looked exciting maybe um, they will go down the youth path again I don't know it, it, it mm. seems to be and, and I think each club you need to have some sort of competitive edge at the mm. like, we can't match City spending if that like we can't get to that mm. level at the moment. Maybe we can, I don't know. But I think our competitive edge clearly this season was the youth and the talent that we brought through our youth pathways as well. And maybe Balogun is yeah is the answer. Right. The gamble I, I don't is know. right. The gamble is know. if you don't, if you go and sell him and then he goes somewhere yeah, else. And well, that's, and, and that's the problem. And does isn't a surge Gnabry, That's the risk. You know what I mean? That's so, the risk, isn't it? If, yeah. if they fit into the system, though, I think that's one thing that we. You know, as fans and as followers of the game, we kind of get wrapped up in the whole, oh, you know, just spend a hundred million on him because he's yeah. a name. It, 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 it doesn't always work that way. No. Most They've got to fit a system. They've got to fit a system. Most times it doesn't work that way. You know, you look at some of our best signings, they've not cost a hundred million. Correct. Like you're talking about Saliba, he cost 27 yeah. million. What no, Martinelli uh, cost? Five million? Martinelli. Six, six, six million. Yeah. Right. I just think that I, I, I'll be really honest with you. If we would, I know like people go, oh, you need more and all that lot. But if we were, say, like to buy, Casido and um, and Rice, I, w I wouldn't be like that disappointed if we didn't buy another forward, another defender, and all that. Yeah. I, I think that that, that yeah. midfield is so important. Midfield so important now. Isn't so it? important to us. I, I do. Feel, I always feel I don't want to go into next season like with when Thomas Party. Oh, he's not on the team coach, and we sitting down like we was, you know, mm. that panic and thinking, oh, that's it, game lost because we got no Thomas Party. I look at it now, if you've got Casido and Rice playing and Thomas Partey's on the bench or oh, he's not fit and all that, you are not worried. Nope. And that that mm -hmm. that is where I, I, I feel like, do you know what I mean? Like we need we need that midfield strength and all I, I wouldn't be selling Shaka by the way. Yeah. But well, but if he wants to go, you've got, he's uh, you've got to replace yeah. him with a with a with a, a big big thing. I, I think Shaq has been I'm surprised he wasn't in the top three for the player of the year, if I'll be mm. honest. I thought he was sensational all, all season. But you know, you've got to replace that. We, we, and we, yep. we was weak we was weak with him in the side. Uh, not in the as a squad, like you know, if you look at it we we were actually played with Sha uh, Shaka and Party and after that no one. You know, one of them gets injured you know, Jorginho coming at the end, but before that, we was in terrible. We was mm. light. He sat in the punga, didn't it? He was, yeah, was so light. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. it needs it needs a lot of <clears throat> investment in there, like. Yeah. You know? Well, listen, um, we're coming towards the end of the show. Uh, of course, we've got the game on Sunday, yep. so um, I'll be saluting the lads. Maybe Lee's not. You know, he <laughs> might be having his. Uh, I'll be in a corner somewhere drinking a beer. <laughs> Uh, yeah, get off! You know, you know I mean? but, nah, I'm sure he won't be. I'm sure he won't be. He will be saluting, saluting the team. Um, but uh, yeah, and um, in that game, looks like it's going to be a send off for Granite Xhaka. Mm -hmm. Could be Tierney's last game. How do yeah. you feel about that? 
I think it, oh, well, we had this uh, chat on, on the live show. I, I, I honestly think that it's not my personal thing, but I, I just feel that the manager, you know, is going to cash in on him. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, if he was Tinny, and I'll say this now, you know what I mean? I, I get, I, if I was a player, I get it, what Shinchenko does, I get it, but when he's injured, I, that, that's what I'm there from. The backup left back, that means that I should be playing when he's injured. Not the right back coming over to play left back and then completely changing the system so that I don't have a left back in the team. That, 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 that's been very, very hurtful as a, mm. as a... It's like basically like, realistically, I know you're going to laugh at me when I say this, but Aaron Ramsdale gets injured and they say, oh yeah, Ben, you're in goal now this week. <laughs> <laughs> and Turner's sitting here with his gloves singing. <laughs> <laughs> been waiting all season for this but it's sort of like that you know what I mean like at the end of it like you know um, so I feel he's been given a bit of a harsh treatment and I, I do think that he, we will cash in on him yeah. yeah yeah so it could be his last game could be looks like it will be Xhaka's last Nelson game Nelson could be his last game possibly Nelson although I'm hearing that he's going to stay but possibly Nelson could be so could be a few send-offs there as well, and um, yeah, it should be. It should be. Yeah, we salute the team. We salute the team. We didn't get the uh, the ultimate prize that we wanted in the end, but it's still been a good season. We've watched some great football, and we've actually challenged for the. Yeah, league, that's the thing. We've challenged for the title. Yeah. But next year, we've got to go that next step further. Yeah. We've got to, imp and we to do that, we're gonna to have to improve the squad um, in the summer. Just before I go, just remind everybody, we've got the Claude Cup coming up on the 25th of June, Saturday the 25th of June, the Claude Cup is back on. We're gonna put um, a link to give you some information on that. It's, we're still putting it together. It's actually this year, uh, AFTV All-Star Team versus a DR Sports All-Star Team. It's gonna have a load of influencers playing. <laughs> There's gonna be a load of um, celebrities joining as well. You do not want to miss that on Saturday the twenty fifth of June. You, right, it's a, it's a charity, oh, playing, yeah. charity <laughs> event. I thought he was injured. Well, I was a few weeks away, yeah, isn't it? Oh. You, know I mean? you could be back. You could be back for that. <laughs> I'm on physio. Physio said I should be all right for that. Like, all right, so <laughs> Lee Lee will be uh, making an appearance in that game, right? So um, I thought, oh, you know. exclusive here. Huh? Invincible podcast exclusive. exclusive. Yeah, yeah. Exclusive. Like, so, well, it's about, I don't know, it was about three weeks away, yeah? Yeah, three, yeah. Four, three, four, yeah. Weeks, four weeks away. Four weeks away, I should be fit by then, like, yeah. Okay, okay. What, what, is he playing the Declan Rice role, or what's the... Well, he, he fancies himself as a midfielder, no? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jimmy fancies himself <laughs> He's sort of the Harry Maguire of the midfield. <laughs> <laughs> That's out of order, isn't it? Like, he yeah. controls the ball a bit like, remember when De Gea had actually when he against Sevilla? When he tried to control that ball. Okay, I was that, that's a bit like Lee's touch as well. Yeah, I was like, oh, no, no, he's, like he's a baller. So you, you cost a lot for minimal output. Is that what Robbie? No, he's a baller. He's a, he, he, he can play. He can I'll play. play. Are you play. definitely in the team? I, I'm definitely in the team. Mate, yeah. All right, so we're looking forward to that. And of course, it's all, it's all about raising money for a great cause. We're going to give you more details um about the game on next week's show right so make sure you look out for that and all the shows on AFTV because we're going to be really pushing this in a big way and we want you all to get down there on the day and support the course Saturday the 25th of June hopefully I want to nice thank sunny day hopefully he was last you year buy me an ice cream after, I would, <laughs> after the game you, after the game, I mean? you can't be getting that before the game no. drinking pints before the game <laughs> you know what I, mean? um, I want to thank work, our yeah. special guest today Paul Sebastiani thank you um, Cheers, from SEN Pleasure. in Melbourne Australia um, make sure you check that out um, yes. if you're over in that region but listen thank you very much for coming on today no thanks for having um, me unfortunately uh you know, the parade ain't on, mate. That's so. all right. That's a matter. We'll make our own parade, mate. We'll make our own parade. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to make our own parade. But um, no, thank you um, very much for coming on. And, thank you. Um, you know, keep doing your great work down there in Australia. Yeah. No, keep, keep, keep doing what you're doing because it makes, you know, it makes our life down down in Australia so much so much more pleasurable and, and easier to follow because all the videos you guys produce... Mm. You know, we can we can watch it at any hour. So mm. it's 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 been fantastic. And I appreciate that. Yeah, no, it's Thank been you very and the much. show the show the live show the other night. I know you mentioned it earlier, yeah. but uh, it was fantastic. So I'm sure you'll be doing more of those. No, definitely. Come next season in the off maybe, season. Maybe we'd come and do one in Melbourne. Yeah, that'd be great, wouldn't it? We can sort I of mean, venue out. No yeah. worries. You, you, where's your brother? You got brother in Australia, isn't it? No, yeah, no, he lives in Thailand. Uh, oh, has he moved now? Close no, enough. I thought been. he lived in Australia. Close no, no, Close no. He's, he's been there once. He's, I've never been Australia. Have you never been down? Never been Australia. No. Oh, all right. It was, so, we have to make that a trip. We have yeah, to make that right. a trip. Long flight. 
That is a, a, that is a long that's flight. A, that is a one thing. Long, long flight, off. boy. That's all right. Long Leo, flight. Leo get so can we sort of pull into Dubai for a little while? Yeah. And stop off in Dubai? <laughs> I think you have to. Be, yeah. don't you? <laughs> Seems like the way to go. Doesn't I'm it, sure you, your mate Edu can sort out some well, uh, tickets. Yeah, for you. <laughs> listen, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Get on to your mate Edu, right? So, listen. Thank you very much for uh, watching the show. Don't forget, you can download this podcast all the normal outlets. And um, don't forget to subscribe here on AFTV if you're watching on YouTube. And we'll be back next week. Um, last game of the season for Arsenal. Nothing really on it against Wolves on Sunday. But listen, we'll still go there and support the team. And um, be hopeful for the off-season that we can pick up some great signings. Thanks for watching and see you next week. The Invincible Podcast. Myself, Robbie and Lee Judges come together once a week to discuss all things Arsenal. Straight talking, considered discussion brought to you by the fans of the only club in football league history to go invincible.